class. We're going to look at bonds right now, uh, the effective interest method. Now in a previous video, I talked about bonds and their characteristics, and now I'm taping videos that uh, go over uh, the different methods and how we treat these bonds so that we can see uh, the journal entries that, get, that are involved. Now there's the effective interest rate and there's the straight line. I have a video on the straight line that goes over both the discount and premium. Uh, the effective interest is more complicated, it's more accurate, but it's more complicated also, but it also makes sense. So this, in this video, I'm going to go over the effective interest on a discount, and then I have the effective interest rate on a premium also. So you'll want to look at, at both videos, and you may want to look at the straight line too, just depending on what you're looking for. Uh, but once again, this method here is uh, more accurate than the straight line method, but it is more complicated. So here's the scenario. Uh, this corporation is, is issuing bonds, so they're going to sell bonds, and so basically they're going to have debt. Okay, they're $100,000 bonds, uh, a total of $100,000. They're going to be for over four years, so four years from now they're going to pay back $100,000. Uh, we're going to calculate interest annually, and the current contract rate on these bonds is 10%, so it's going to pay 10% of $100,000 or $10,000 in interest every year. Okay. However, for a bond like this, with this kind of risk, the actual market, in the market right now, the interest rate is really 12%. Okay. So this bond isn't uh, selling, I mean, it, it, it's, um, the interest rate is lower than the actual market rate right now. So this is why it's going to sell, like I said, at a discount. Okay. Now the contract, I call it the contract rate because that's, that's what my textbook uses. But other textbooks use such terms as the stated rate, or maybe the coupon rate, or the nominal rate. Okay, so if you're using a different textbook, different source, and it says stated rate, coupon rate, nominal rate, those are all the same as the contract rate. All right. So now, first of all, what we want to do is I want to show you how you're going to value this bond. Okay, what should this bond sell for? If the contract rate's 10%, but the actual market rate now market rate right now is 12%. Well, first of all, we want to look at the cash flows. There are we're going to get we're going to have to pay out ten thousand dollars each year for four years. So this is a cash flow. Once again, we calculated this by taking the the one hundred thousand times the contract rate of ten percent. So that's ten thousand dollars every year. And then plus, this corporation is going to have to pay back the principal amount of one hundred thousand dollars at the end in year four. Now we can figure out the current rate, I mean the, the current value of this cash flow. So what we're going to do is we're going to discount these cash flows back to the present. So we're going to have to use present value tables. Now if you have a calculator, know how to use a calculator, most calculators do calculate present values. So you could do that. Now first of all, uh, this is the N is the number of time periods and it's four. And the interest rate that we're going to look at now isn't the 10% because we're looking at the market rate. What's the true value of this bond? We're going to use the market rate, which is 12%. So now we go to our tables, our present value tables, which are in the back of your textbook. Uh, typically, they're in the appendix or towards the back of your textbook. Um, you'll go to the present value of an annuity for the 10000 because an annuity is... Uh, equal dollar amounts, equal time periods apart. So this $10,000 is equal amounts, because it's 10,000 each year, and it's equal time periods apart, it's every single year. So we're gonna go to the present value of an annuity table. You're gonna go to N equal to four, and I equal to 12%, and where those two meet is the rate we want. And that rate is going to be 3. 0373. So that, when you multiply that by 10,000, you get 30, oh, I just messed up, 30,373 dollars. That's what our annuity is worth. This $40,000 today is worth 30,373 dollars. Okay. The 100,000, we're going to discount that back to the present also to year zero. Okay. And you're going to use not the annuity table, you're going to use the present value of a single dollar amount. Okay, you're going to go four periods out at 12% in that table. So once again, you're going to find where those meet, and you're going to find a factor of 
0.6355 times 100,000 gets us 63,550. Now when we add these together, you will get 93,923. Okay, so that's the value of our bond, 93,923. So it is selling at a discount. It's not gonna sell for 100,000, it's gonna sell for 93,923. Now, if this bond had a contract rate of 10% and a market rate of 10%, then when we discounted these flows back to the present, this would add up to 100,000 exactly if the market and contract rate are the same. In my premium uh, example, in another video where I go over the effective interest rate on a premium, when the market rate is lower than the contract rate, it's gonna sell for a premium. And when you calculate these cash flows, this is going to uh, calculate to more than 100,000. Okay, and once again, I've got a video on that that you might want to view. Okay, so now when we sell this bond, this is what we're going to do. We're going to uh, credit cash because cash will come in of, let's see, 93,223. Now I'm going to erase, erase some of this right now. I want to erase this so that I can put this journal ent entry in here better. Okay. Cash will be uh, 93,923 because that's what we calculated the value to be. We're going to have a discount on bond payable. I'm going to just abbreviate on bonds payable, discount on bonds payable. The discount is 6,077. The discount is the amount less than 100,000. You take this, uh, you take 100,000 minus this amount, the 93,923, and that's how you get the discount, because it's being discounted less than the $100,000. In four years from now, we're gonna have to pay back these bonds payable, and so we're gonna have on our books 100,000. Now this discount goes along with the bonds payable. So on, on your balance sheet and liabilities, these two go together. So right now it shows a total value of $93,923. Okay, let me erase the rest of this. Now let's see how we're going to handle this, uh, this discount. Because this discount has to be used up over the life of the bond. We have to reduce this by year four to zero so that our bonds payable in, in, in the last year, the fourth year, uh, it's $100,000 exactly, so when we pay back the $100,000, uh, there's no discount left, and we can pay the full $100,000 because that's what's on our books. All right, so the table we're going to use is uh, cash payment. I'm going to abbreviate things here. Cash payment, bond interest expense. Okay, discount amortization. Sorry that this is running into each other. Let me put a line here. I'll just kind of, okay, there we go. Discount amortization. Um, the unamortized uh, discount and the carrying value. Okay, when you're doing these spreadsheets, you want these columns. Now, uh, I'm going to assume that this is the beginning of January, January 1st, 15th. So the unamortized discount right now is 6077 and our carrying value on the bond is the difference between the discount and the bonds payable, which is 93923 Now at the end of the year, December 31st, we're going to have a cash payment. Now remember, it's paying out 10% on the bond payable, so 10% of Carrying contract amount is 10% of the 100000 is $10,000. Your actual interest expense, though, is the value of the bond times the market rate, which is 12%. Okay, so right here on the bond interest expense, I'm going to put 12% up there just to remind me that it is based off of 12% uh, market rate, not the contract rate. So then the true interest expense is 12% of 92923 which is 11000 271. So the discount on our amortization is actually 1,271. That's how much uh, is the, the difference between these two. 
that's how much we're using up of this discount. Okay, so the discount now is going to go down to 48,000, I'm sorry, 4,807. So now our carrying value is 100,000 less our new unamortized discount. So that's 95,193. Okay, now I'm going to erase this journal entry. Okay, once again, this is the journal entry that we recorded on January 1st to record the issuance the issuance of these bonds payable, okay? And we have this discount. Now we're gonna use this discount up, right? It's got a credit balance, a debit balance right now. Okay, so our first journal entry on December 31st, let me put this down, on 1231, we're gonna have bond interest expense, bond interest expense of 11,271. That's our true interest expense, so 11,271. And then we're going to have our discount on bonds payable. Okay, now remember, in our other entry, we had a debit balance. Now we're using up part of that discount. So we're going to credit that 1,271. So that's why we reduced the unamortized. It was 6,077. Now we're using up 1,271 because when we pay, when we pay cash-wise out to these bondholders for their interest, we're not paying 11,000, we're only paying 10,000. Part of this interest expense is found in that discount, okay? Now this is the part where you really need to think about this. It makes perfect sense, it's just a little bit confusing on how we calculated it and exactly looking at what's taking place here. This is the true interest expense because these bonds, even though they have a contract rate of 10%, they were calculated based off of a market rate of 12%. That's why it's sold for a discount, okay? And now we need to get rid of that discount, so we use up, that discount is basically part of that interest, and we're using up part of that discount so that we can recognize the full bond interest expense. All right, let's move on now. The next year, uh, the interest payment at the end of the fall of the next year, uh, 2016, will be 10,000 again. Now we've gotta calculate our interest expense. It's going to be different because our carrying value changed. So 12% of 95,193 is now 11,423. The difference between these two is our discount amortization. So it's $1,142. Well, let's see. Nope. It's $1,423. There we go. And so now we subtract this from our discount, which gets us down to 3,384. Now we subtract this from the 100,000, which gets us our new carrying value of 96,616. I hope I'm writing all these numbers down right. Okay, so this is for the next year. So then when we do this for 2016, our bond interest expense will then be 11,423. Our discount will then be 1423 and our cash didn't change. It's still 10,000. 1231.17, the next year, another interest payment, 10,000. 12% of the new carrying value of 96,616 is 11,593. The difference between these two is 1,593. Subtract that from our current unamortized discount. We get 1,791. And so then our new carrying value, when you subtract out this unamortized discount from the 100,000, it gets us 98,209. So then when we do our, our journal entry the next year, that year end, it's going to be a bond interest expense of 11,593. So this will be 11,593. This will be 1,593 and then the 10,000 stays the same. Now the last year, we have interest. Okay, We're gonna take 12% of the carrying value. Now notice that, that we've rounded numbers here and there. Okay, I didn't go to the penny here, and when I calculated the value of the bond, uh, I didn't use, I, I, I rounded that also. So we're slightly off here. Now when you take 12% uh, of this, it should always equal exactly what's left over in your unamortized discount amount. 
So that's, you, you don't even have to do the calculation if you don't want to. We can just say, okay, we need to use up the remainder of our unamortized discount, 1791. So then the, uh, so that would go here, 1791. So our interest expense is 11,791, so that our discount can be, amortization can be 1791. Then our unamortized discount would then be zero, okay? And so then that would bring our carrying value up to 100,000. So then our interest journal entry for the last year, I'll write this in, would be interest expense 11,791, the elimination of the remainder of our discount, 1791, cash of 10,000, okay? And then also on this date, this is when we're gonna pay the bond off. So we would also have um, bond payable, I'll just write it down here. Bonds payable, 100,000, and cash, 100,000. Because now the bonds have matured, and we're paying the bond payable off also. So this $100,000 shows that we owe this, and so now we're paying it off, and we're eliminating the bonds payable there. Okay. All right, a little bit complicated, but it does make sense. Once again, this is the effective interest method for discounts. And I also have the premium uh, example also on another video. Thanks, class.